how do you convince someone of something when it's really the people underneath them who are going to be the ones who benefit the most? Welcome back to the Idea Supply Chain, where we take a look at where ideas come from and what makes those ideas valuable. Today, I wanted to talk a bit about the building of abundant systems and some of the struggles I've had as I'm thinking about how to market this idea and offer it as kind of a consulting slash coaching offering to people in positions of power. So as I've been doing this, one of the things that I've really kind of struggled a bit with is figuring out how to market it to the people with a budget when the reality is it's not going to be as obviously helpful to those people. It's going to be helpful to the people underneath the people with power who have the budgets to apply. But ultimately, it will make an organization stronger. And so I've really been playing around with the ideas of efficiency and how we bring in resources in order to build out systems that are repeatable, that are maintainable, and you know, ultimately don't die. And that's kind of what organizations are set up to do. They're set up to prevent death. Now, the weird thing is with abundant systems, you don't actually need to plan to not die because everything is alive by default. It sets up a system that is able to grow and change, but change is not equivocal to death. It's not taking a business and letting it just die. And so as I've been, you know, kind of comparing scarce systems versus abundant systems, how can I market this in a way that people in power will be able to understand? And maybe the answer is that I don't do that. Maybe the answer is that I market toward the people who are underneath people in positions of power and try to get them to share this idea with the people above them and say, hey, let's have this discussion. By the way, if you're interested in bringing someone in, I found this person, they can help and maybe use them as a referral source. So maybe that's something I need to consider. I could even provide something like talking points. Hey, do you feel stuck in this situation? You know, one of the things that a lot of people in power don't realize is that by having scarce systems in place, first of all, they don't allow people to grow as quickly as they're able to. And so, you know, you think in a typical job, you have someone in a role, they have to be in that role for years in order to move up. You have a very linear uh, growth trajectory. Maybe you get 2% a year for inflation. Maybe if you're lucky and it's really generous, you might get three or 4%, uh, you know, of a raise, but ultimately it's this very, very linear growth pattern, but we live in an abundant society right now. And so what happens is if you're not giving the people underneath you a way to exponentially grow, kind of their impact on earnings, their impact on their own financial state, they're going to eventually leave for an abundant system. So this is kind of the first and foremost. If you don't offer an abundant system, people will find the abundant system. And guess who's going to be the first one to leave to find that abundant system? Your top performers. So if you really want to keep your best talent around, you've got to give them a place to grow into. And so I think that's first and foremost, maybe how I can communicate this. Um, and then, so perhaps I feel like that's a good place to start. If you are a top performer, maybe you're someone that I need to talk to. I need to give you the talking points to talk to your manager and say, hey, look, I'm really not happy with my growth trajectory. I've been doing X, Y, and Z, which is allowing me to grow my knowledge and experience well beyond what the majority of people are doing here. And I don't feel that I'm being appreciated for that. And so, but see, then there's, that's, that's where power dynamics come in. And that's when it gets really weird with kind of these communication aspects, because if 
you come in with that attitude to your manager, a lot of times it's setting up a conflict from the get go. And that's part of the issue, right? Like all of these systems are set up to put conflicts in place because the managers have a budget that isn't aligned with what the employees want. And that's one of the issues with scarce systems. That's exactly what I'm trying to say, because people don't have that opportunity to grow as quickly and as efficiently as they want. And so guess what? They're either going to not grow and then you're kind of stuck with them as who they are now. And that's fine, I guess. But you're also going to eventually have your business die out um, because all of the best performers are going to leave. They're going to take a lot of this inside knowledge and they're going to apply it in a way that allows them to really grow themselves, their own offerings much, much greater. Um, and, and so I need to figure out a way to, again, kind of communicate this in a way that says, hey, look, the system sucks. It's not manager versus employee. It's manager and employee versus system. As I talk this out, I think that might be a good way to package this up. Because if you are a manager out there, you understand that a lot of times these types of systems prevent you from being able to reward your best employees. Uh, you know, we also have an issue where the best employees aren't necessarily understood as the best employees because the stuff that they can offer isn't being acknowledged, recognized, or even allowed. We want people to fit into very, very repeatable boxes. And so because we want anybody to be able to be replaced at any given point in time, we don't take advantage of people's unique skill sets in order to maximize the value that they can bring to an organization. Um, that's why I do think a lot of this information is going to be most useful in a brand new organization that is getting ready to grow from the beginning because it's not going to grow within kind of these set structures and have to fight against existing barriers. Um, but then, you know, obviously that has a whole new uh, can of worms, you know, new companies typically don't have a budget to have this type of consulting in. Hence the venture studio. I want to build out companies that exist like this to prove out the, their validity. But I do believe that there's going to be a market someplace in there for people and companies who want to grow these abundant systems where, you know, one of the things I have tried to do, honestly, is to define abundant systems a lot better. And I think one of the best definitions I've come up with is an abundant system is a system where every individual within the system can grow at their own rate without impacting the growth of any other person in that system. So my success in the system doesn't take away from, you know, person B's success in the system. Everybody can grow independently, but as they grow, the system grows as a whole. So anybody's growth is actually beneficial to everybody's growth. And what you want to do is you want to identify the fastest growing people in order to figure out what they're doing and then share that with the rest of the people in the system, because that means the overall system grows faster and faster and it evolves and it changes and it's ready to adapt to an ever changing world much better than a system that we try to lock down into these very set roles and have these set career ladders that you have to climb, uh, you know, taking years and years to grow through each step. Frankly, that just doesn't fit in today's world anymore. And you're going to see companies do it for a while because, frankly, most of them are very, very slow to adapt to changing circumstances because they're set up to be. But the reality is that people at, at all income levels are being crunched harder and harder, and they're seeing kind of what's possible grow faster than what they're able to do inside of these companies. And again, the people who are going to see it first are going to be 
your best performers who are looking at what's out there. They're going to see what people of similar skill sets are doing, and they're going to go try to do it themselves. And I say this as someone who did exactly that. I said, oh, wait, like all these other people are doing this stuff. Why can't I? Turns out it's still pretty hard. But the reality is I'm a much more valuable like asset to a company right now because I have all of these different skills that I've built up while attempting to do things on my own versus staying in the company and focusing in on just, you know, building React components or, or building data pipelines or whatever I've done in the past. All of that stuff was great, but the fact of the matter was they kept me in a very small box and said, okay, you can only grow so fast and, you know, otherwise we're just going to kind of ignore that growth but we will use you as much as possible and we're going to give you more work the more efficient you are that's a very like bad system to be in place because one of the things that we need to consider is that most systems punish efficiency right now that that's that's what scarce systems do because what they're going to do is they're going to say great i've got you for this amount of time because i've paid for all of your time and if you're you know, deliver the amount of work in less time than we've given you, we'll just give you more work to fill up that additional time. And again, that's not allowing that growth potential, right? And so what you want to do is you want to actually figure out how to say, hey, we see how quickly you're delivering things. We want you to actually deliver this stuff as quickly as possible and continue to shrink the amount of time you're spending doing that. And then if we want to add more things in, that's fine too, but we're going to add in additional pay structures. You know, people could potentially work multiple jobs. We really need to think this through in a lot of different ways because of the way AI is, you know, coming about. I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking, man, I could have probably automated a few of my previous jobs by now. Like, if I really wanted to, I could spend a little bit of time building a system that could build React components for a very specific code base um, or build up data pipelines based on certain structures. That's all becoming possible now. And people are going to do that. And what you're going to have is you're going to have a very weird, different class of people where you've got people doing stuff manually and then people automating their jobs and becoming like, disconnected from like the stuff that they're actually doing. And I think that's actually a disservice to both the people and the companies doing that. Um, and it just shows how weird some of the incentive structures are to where they allow some of these behaviors. So I, again, I've got to figure out how to communicate this all to the people who are willing to pay for consultants to come in and talk about this stuff, because I do think it's really, really important. And um, you know, getting executives and managers to see what kinds of issues they're really going to face in the coming years because of AI, because of the creator economy, because of all these different incentive structures that we've got in place versus the ones that are now possible in this kind of abundant economy. You know, there there's a lot of things changing right now, and I don't think people are really honestly aware of what these changes are going to bring about. So I would love to be able to help explain that to people, but I need to do some work on my messaging as I package all of this up and try to get it into, uh, you know, some semblance of a book form. It's been really helpful to, to talk through it. And even this video right here, I'm talking through ideas as I have them uh, to kind of help me figure out what these messages sound like as I'm talking about them. And thinking about how they're going to be received by different audiences. So anyway, got to keep playing with it. But I thought I'd share that because uh, if you're watching this channel, chances are you're excited about where the future is headed and, you know, the power of ideas in an abundant future and how we can use abundant systems to really maximize the value of everybody uh, who wants to participate in these given systems and, you know, work together to create abundance for everybody, because frankly, we can do it. It's not as hard as we make it seem. And I, I honestly believe that we can do a lot to just make life a lot easier for everybody. 
Uh, and in fact, I think it's really our duty to do so. So I'm going to continue uh, pushing that forward and doing everything I can to help make that a reality because otherwise companies are going to get hit really hard when the best performers inside the company realize that they've got better options out there uh, and then they start taking them. And then you're only left with the people who have decided that the minimum is enough for them. So that's something that companies are going to have to face uh, sooner rather than later, I think. Anyway, that's enough rambling for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.